Mamf, do you ever find it hard to get the kids to do educational activities when all they want to do is play? I know what you mean. I actually think Paul and Rosie learn better when they're enjoying themselves by their learning. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely. Like, for example, last night, Nelly and Arthur, they was out in the garden for ages playing, but they was playing this horsey game. I was watching them out the window, like, jumping over things, but I was thinking, <laughs> come on now, we need to get in, bedtime, do your reading, like, you know, especially now Arthur's in year two, everything steps up, like, he has to do a certain amount of reading per week. Something I found that works really well for us is the Tony Box by our podcast sponsor, Tony's. As our listeners probably know by now, the Tony Box is a musical story box that helps children develop their speech through songs and stories. You know how much Rosie loves Matilda? Well, she's learned so many new words from just listening to the Matilda story on her Tony box. She's like your own little Matilda. <laughs> she is. So cute. Tony's have got loads of other classic stories too, like the Enchanted Wood, Paddington and the Gruffalo. So there's something for all kids of all ages. My kids absolutely love Paddington as well. It's their favourite. So do mine. Mine absolutely love it. And as a special treat for our listeners, you can get 10% off Tony boxes and Tony box bundles with the code Sam and Billy 10. That's 10% off on Tony boxes and Tony box bundles when you visit www.tonies.com and use the code Sam and Billy 10. Good evening, my sister. Hello, good evening. <laughs> we made it on. <laughs> yeah, we're recording at seven o'clock, so sorry it's a delay. Um, usual excuses, <laughs> but we Kids, did make it. Life. Kids, yeah. <laughs> um, are yours in bed? Uh, no, not yet. Um, so Margot's actually not been very well. She's got, she just got a really bad cough and cold. Like she's, I think a my lot of it's to do with teething. Yeah. Do you think it's my like they go back to school, coughing. isn't it? The kids and they just get all the germs. But yeah. I think, you know, like when Margot's a baby, bless her, all like, you know, they can't get all the snot. I and Oh, you just feel so like her little eyes today. She was like trying to smile, but they were so sad. You know, you just feel so sorry for them. Yeah, like, you feel really helpless because there's only so much you can do. They just need exactly. to ride it out and it just go. All of a sudden, you they wake up after one nap and it's gone, and you're like, oh, they're yeah, again. yeah. She's just been like really like yeah, just just not herself today, not very well. So it's been a little bit, a little bit of a um, one of those days. But yeah, we're the same actually right now. now's our house. The, I, the kids, I didn't. They have swimming on a Monday or a Tuesday. I can't remember. I they didn't swim this week as well because I just thought that's not going to help. No, just try and keep them, try and keep the immune systems up. But no, they're yeah. um, we're exactly the same. Thankfully, touch wood. I haven't got anything. And actually, Paul's got one of those um, uh, sauna bed things that you oh, cover yeah. yourself in. Have you seen that? So I thought I'm going to have a sauna because apparently, like the heat of it helps kind of fight and eliminate any kind of viruses and stuff. So I thought, we can't wow. all have this cough and cold. Someone needs to be surviving in the household. Someone, yeah. <laughs> Someone needs to keep us alive. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, just a quick note. This episode um, is mainly about my trip to Uganda. So I guess it's a little bit of a trigger warning because I'm speaking about, I guess, sensitive subjects and things that people might not find comfortable. I don't go too deep into specific stories. Um, but yeah, I guess just a, a gentle warning that there are some upsetting stories. I was going to um, say, how are you? How are you feeling? Obviously, you've been back for how many days I got, now? Like, I got back on Thursday morning. Thursday, yeah. So it's yeah. still quite fresh, everything. But it's kind, of the, it's kind of the first time we spoke properly because... We chatted on the phone for a bit, but Billy and I are seeing each other this week. So we was like, we always try and save as much as we can when we see each other. Um, but it's actually quite good because we can talk about it. Because we had so many questions on the podcast and obviously in my own Instagram about yeah. the trip. Um, yeah, so I got back Thursday morning and this whole weekend, so like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I have just been like, I don't know if decompressing is the right word, but you know, it's just, it's so emotional overwhelming you're not really getting any sleep it was a 16 hour travel there travel back um so much we done in the 36 hours that we was physically in Uganda mm. like when you come home it just sort of hits you almost so like completely because you're almost you're probably running on some kind of an ad adrenaline while Absolutely, you're there as well yeah because I mean the trip in itself like going to Uganda is a, a, a 
a big decision for you to make as well as a mum because it's you know there's probably certain places yeah, there's there like dangers and factors safe. yeah exactly so so it's probably like your whole body was just running on like an adrenaline and not only that obviously you know being there seeing what yeah. is going on there and wanting to help as much as you can you're probably on like a different drive yeah so I guess just to explain a little bit about Project Rescue Children is a non-profit charity um, which is fighting against child trafficking exploitation um child sacrifice um it's kind of like a bit of an umbrella for everything and I actually started following uh Adam who is the CEO of the charity um and PRC back in when was lockdown 2020 so yeah it's, Two, it's yeah been, 2020 yeah. so it's been a good few years and then I started kind of like researching about you know trafficking and uh uh, sacrifice. I mean, it's obviously very deep, heavy stuff. I know we don't you just speak about this kind of stuff on the podcast, but I, you know, I'll just answer some of the questions we've got in. You don't have to divulge too much. But um, yeah, so and I started reposting stuff, and Adam recognised it, and he was like very appreciative because he's like, "There's not many." He calls them blue ticks, <laughs> so he calls like <laughs> people that have got. He just calls them blue ticks when you know there's not many blue ticks that share our stuff because it's um controversial is not the right word but it's stuff that people don't want to believe or see or hear um which happens obviously a lot and it's not kind of with the nature of this charity and what they're fighting against it's a real tough one because trafficking is a huge business um just below probably on par with drugs so it's such a huge crime network that there's a lot of people higher up and press that just don't want to go near it because it's actually a business Mm -hmm. without saying too much or going into it too much. And countries like Uganda are like a hub for trafficking because there are children everywhere. Like, I can't explain it. They're just abandoned children, thousands of them everywhere, on the streets, together there's no parents where are the parents like it's just crazy and what, they're just kind they're just, they're just sort like of wandering like, around in groups wandering around the traffickers will get them begging so when you're in traffic like driving to and from when you're in the city they're just all banging on the windows begging like you know a lot of the ones mm. that are begging are usually like the girls that are maybe from the age of about eight to early teens they're on the streets begging because the, the traffickers send them out anyway but so, so that's when you like say city. sorry, just to so when you say the traffickers, so mm. they these so the traffickers are people that are in control of these children. Yeah, exactly. So and it's so corrupt because it's such a it's such a poor country that, for example, with the police out there. Like, obviously, an investigation costs money, right? And they just don't have any money. So there's there's charities out there. There's one called Make a Child Smile, and that's who PRC have teamed with f- for the build of the rescue centre that they're doing, which we can do now, thanks to everybody raising all the money all altogether. Um, basically, they're like volunteers that have set up their own charity that are working with the police, but they're doing it, they're doing the investigating because the police don't do it because there's no money, if that makes sense. For example, the top detective chief of the Interpol, which is the police in Uganda, Detective Livingstone, right, he was with us the whole time. He's the most incredible man. He's, like, basically on his own fighting for trafficking. Like, he's really fighting to it. Guess what his wage is per month? I don't know. I've got a clue. £130. Wow. That's his and wage. He's... And he's got a family of four. He's got four kids and a wife. And he just works all day, all night. He hardly ever sees his family. He often sleeps in his car because wow. if he's on, like, if he's investigating and he's traveling around, like, there's no money just to pop into a hotel. Or Billy, he was mm. walking around with a notepad and a pen. Like, that is that is what he was doing. All his, He had this printout, and I've got a picture of the printout because we was laughing a little bit because they were really lovely and just so nice. He does all of his investigations in this little pad and a pen. So Kelly and I got him a laptop because yeah. to, 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 to store all his work and do all his stuff on. Well, actually, the guys told yeah. us, Adam was telling us, and me and Kelly was like, this is crazy. Like, he's the chief detective in Uganda 
fighting, trying to fight for these kids in and trafficking. So basically, like there's there's places called slums. So yeah. there's like many many slums in Uganda. Obviously, loads of countries. But when mm-hmm. I say I've never ever seen or experienced poverty like it my whole entire life, I don't know. I think there might be adverts or you might see stuff stuff in movies, but. We physically, I could not believe the living conditions, the smell. They're living with animals, so like chickens, goats, cows, the the dirt, the mess, the water that the children were picking tomatoes and things that had fallen in it out of it. It just was like, it was disgusting. Like it was so sad and all these children were just like together, like all the the sort of four or five year olds had the babies on the back, loads of them. Yeah, I like, see. There's that just in no your parents. That they they just get abandoned because the parents can't afford to raise them or look after them. They've, they've just got nothing. So this is how corrupt it is. So the children, like the slum we went to, that, which I posted a, a reel of, but you can't see it in the reel because no. it's kind of close up shots of the baby. We've actually filmed everything to do a, a documentary. To, to air on YouTube, you'll see more of it then. Um, like the, the, it is just the severity of it with the smell. Oh, it was just so sad. But anyway, the the slums, the traffickers pay the rent at the slums. That's where like you know there's thousands of people in them. And when we went in there, like all the kids were running up to one of them, calling him daddy, 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 and he's actually a trafficker. It's just so corrupt. Like, what does he do then, like, with the children or, like, he'll... Yeah, so, like, the Westerners, not in every case, but they'll come over and the children are trafficked, so they're sold for every unimaginable crime you could think of. And I've seen it firsthand, but I I don't want to get... I don't... I'm saying what I know from my experience of being there. Yeah, of course. But there's also a a lot more to it. Yeah, that of makes course. Sense. Like I think <coughs> just even you being there and sh- mm. like sharing all the footage, you know, the stories, the yeah. reels. Like I mean, obviously I'm your sister, so you know, I'm going to be biased, but you know, I was hooked. Watched the yeah. same thing, the same reel, the same stories over and over again and yeah. but also really inspired. I think like so many people, like everywhere I went, even in the school playground, like if I bumped into someone everyone was talking about it and I think yes. like That's what so you good. have done there the awareness and is everything. the awareness not yeah. obviously the, the the money that you've raised and you and the team is some it's incredible like so much money but I think that people were so tuned into it um no you're so right and I've had the same the response has been incredible because it you know the the, the you know the goal was to make 80,000 for the rescue center the medical center we raised 130 plus which is absolutely outstanding but actually the bigger picture is the awareness. People don't under, people don't really understand what trafficking is and what a huge business it is. You know, like in, for example, we can go into that in a bit or people can wait and watch it on the um, uh, documentary because I, I don't know if it's a bit heavy to talk about child sacrifice on our podcast. Mm. I don't think it's really like what listeners might want to hear. Um, so if you do want to listen to that, then we can you can watch it when we do the documentary. But people, nobody even believes child sacrifice is a thing. When we was there in Uganda, I couldn't believe what I was seeing and what I was hearing. Like It was mm. absolutely insane. And like I said on one of my stories, I still can't get my head around it because no. we sat with a witch doctor. We drove three hours deep into Uganda, basically to like the jungle. It was insane. Like people were staring. Like these are like families, communities that live in, in villages that have never, ever left their village. So like wow. even us turning up in a van with... Um, cameras that was the only time I think it felt really eerie to me because people you felt like, out your depth a little bit it was like, completely yeah and we was like and we had the Interpol with us and they were amazing you know we had police with us the whole time so you know we did feel safe and protected but there was always that feeling especially going to visit a witch doctor in his village in his environment and uh <clears throat> when we got out and we sat in his like sort of garden area hasn't really got a garden but like it's like they're basically they where this this witch doctor's house was like a a brick stables. Does that make sense? Like a stables mm-hmm. size, yeah, made from bricks. But mm-hmm. like, you know, Alex, who is the CEO of Make a Child Smile Charity, who's also working with the police to to uh, to fight against trafficking. He said he's rich. 
it's mad. Like, so, but it's like a, because it's made from brick and he's got a roof and he's got electric. Yeah, that's he's, classed as rich. He's rich. Anyway, so we were sitting in his, like, backyard. And we were sitting with amongst these shrines and these are shrines that are used when they sacrifice. It was just so, mm. like, you can't really comprehend it. Do you know what I mean? No, yeah. Even Adam, it's... Adam has never even sat with a witch doctor before. Obviously, he said he was retired. <clears throat> and he didn't say any crimes that he'd done, but he was saying about what happens. Basically, as well, I was like, so how many children are getting sacrificed? And they said, roughly, you know, two children a day are getting sacrificed. Oh could you God. imagine? Like, could you actually imagine that? Like, for their blood, it's, anyway. it's, it's, it's It is unimaginable. But also, like, just the whole the whole experience, like, seeing it all, like, I think even... You know, for me, watching it, like, you just don't realise how much poverty as well there is and, you know, how these children and families are living and having to live. Like, it's... Like, they're just about surviving, aren't they? They're not, like... It's really sad, and that's what Kelly said. When we was in one of the slums, she was like... Obviously, it was all very emotional and sad, but she was like... It's like they're just existing. They're not even living. There's yeah. no food. There's no. There's nothing. It's just. It's just so unbelievably sad that there is so much poverty in the world. Obviously, it's all over the world. But like seeing mm. it like that is is that's like probably the worst you'll ever see. You know. Yeah. It's just one big circle that you feel like you're never going to get out of because obviously what we done was incredible and we'll obviously keep fighting till the day we die to try and help as many people and educate because education is a really important thing if the children are educated that is something they'll have installed in them that then they can tell their brothers and sisters and their children Mm -hmm. basically then no one's educating they're so poor so like the traffickers will send the kids out begging that money's not for them that money goes back to the trafficker so they the traffickers have them working from the minute they can start walking basically um and then he has control over them because they have a sense of home not that you can really call it home it's just like they sleep on they sleep on the floor and it was like I just can't explain how bad it was like and all these children smiling holding your hands showing you around all giggling and dancing and they're just like no matter what every point of that trip um, there was always a child that was smiling. Like, no yeah. matter how poor, and whatever they've gone through, they haven't got parents. That was, a, I guess, probably the only thing that kind of keeps you going and sense and, like, makes you feel a little bit uplifted and what you're doing is... Because it's, it's, it's not easy and you can't do what we've done. Like, we had to have, like meetings with the police to get us in this area and then that person yeah. and that person. Like a lot of like thought and planning had to go in to yeah. doing what you did for those few days. But uh, like obviously it was so worth it. Like obviously Instagram can be a really negative place but in with things like this, like there was just over 10,000 people that donated but there was wow. around about 5 million views across the three reels. So even if people aren't interested with the charity side of it, just the awareness, like trafficking. The awareness. Thing. Look after your children. It's this not just is happening what, in Uganda, it's happening everywhere. This is like, what it's um, everywhere. This is what I feel as well, which is which was so like just I suppose yeah, so so powerful about what mm. you posted on Instagram was the awareness. Like like so I was speaking to a couple of the mums at the school and they was like had no idea that was good you know like Mm. I feel like we're so like you said a lot of the time we don't want to read things like that we don't want to believe it because it can actually have a negative impact on your day because you don't want to believe these things are going on in the world and I think you know like using your platform and actually putting that out there and I think it impacted so many people and it's just yeah so inspiring like just to and you know what See. as well, it's a really tough one because you get shadow banned. So I had to stop using hashtags on my post because the hashtags were bringing my, like one day, one set of stories that I'd done, you would have seen it because obviously I would be one of your top people that you we follow each mm. other's stuff. But um, it had, 
You won't believe this, like 20,000 views, one set of my How stories. Many? 20,000. Sorry, I know that some people wouldn't understand. When you've got like, so we have got like just over 2.5 million followers. We usually get hundreds of yeah, thousands hundreds, of views, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I got 20,000 views on one string of stories on the first day I got there because I used the hashtags. So bad. Wow. Like they, they, they shadow ban you. It's just so weird. Like if you do, you know, if it, anything to do with trafficking, it's like... It doesn't go with the, you know, the, not, it's not the rules. What do you call it? Like the. Like I suppose the it's like, it doesn't go with the, like the glossy Instagram image that most yeah. people use Instagram for is to like, you yeah. know. And let's they do, honest, they shadow burn the mo- you. The most things, most things that we all post on Instagram, most of them are happy th- positive yeah, of course, and, and happy positive, and happy, yeah. like, and obviously, you know, there's, that's that's the other good thing about Instagram. I think we've had this conversation before, you know, where people are starting to be a little more real and like, yeah. you know, Insta versus reality and everything mm-hmm. like that. But obviously, you know, with the trafficking, it's a whole other, whole other thing, isn't it? I also think like with this, where it's, it's such it's such a huge business and obviously it's happening all over the world, like I said earlier, it's not just in countries like Uganda, although it is one of the highest places for trafficked children in the world. But, like, hardly any of it ever makes the news. Like, that's what I find really odd. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. like, it's very, you have to dig deep to find and get all the information. That's why so many people don't know about it. Like, why doesn't why doesn't the whole world not know about ch- child sacrifice? Like, mm. why? It's, it's the, probably, the, hu- it's probably the, the, the most evil crime that anyone could ever commit is sacrificing their own child but for, I, their I, own, I, for their own benefit until until you obviously told me and you started working with the charity mm. i i didn't know about it i didn't no. know what it was well it's like I and obviously i follow adam now and ago. i yeah and exactly. like everything that he posts like obviously you know i i, I read a lot of it but some of it is just like yeah, it's a lot it's heavy but like if we can get <coughs> when with the rescue center which is going to start being built soon of all the funds that were raised, education is so important because even the witch doctor that we sent to, he said, this was his words, and it'll be on the documentary as well, he said there's no benefit for us having the child's blood. But what happens is they're so poor, so what happens, like, it's like a game, I can't explain it, It's I find it really odd, but just to give you an example, it's a culture that they've had installed in them for centuries and centuries and centuries, and obviously they're so poor, they believe in these witch doctors, so usually they'll deal with like herbs and things, you know, if they've got something wrong with them, but, you know, most of them practice all this black magic stuff, and they'll say, um, I will give you wealth if you bring me the blood of a chicken, or something. It starts like that, right? <coughs> and then they pay the witch doctor money. They go get the chicken, bring it, blood, do whatever they do with it. And then it just goes up and up and up. And he said, then we'll say, you know, bring blood of a child that's three foot tall. They'd be like really sp- specific with it. They say, we, we'd be so specific that it's beyond their wildest dreams and it won't happen, but it happens. But then I was sitting there thinking... Bearing in mind this is all being translated because the man obviously doesn't mm. speak a word of English. But then I'm thinking, so when they show up with this child, why can't you just say no? Like, you know, this was just, we thought that, you know, we wanted our money from you. We didn't think you'd actually bring us a child. And then he said, they said, it's too late. We have to do it now. I'm like, I've just got, why? It's not too late. Yeah. Like, this is what I couldn't get my head around. And we divulge into it. Like, it is, the answers are there when in the documentary. But... I just walked away from it. My mind was like, I could not get my head around it. I was yeah, like, like, it doesn't make sense. It yeah, doesn't make it, sense to do that then, to an innocent then, child. Exactly. That all everyone kept saying was it all comes just back down to money because they're so poor. I was like, I just can't get my head around it. Mm. But anyway, like obviously, I guess many, many people don't. And that's sorry, getting back to the education thing. We need to educate these villages that, you know, all these children, all these people that it's not, true like you don't sacrifice children to get health or wealth that's not true do you know what I mean it's like educating people about the westerners that are trafficking to that are pedophiles that are you know exploiting these children like you know all these like I said earlier like the worst crimes that you could ever think if the children are educated then 
they'll understand because they don't they don't know. It's almost unbelievable that in, <coughs> in 2023 that this mm. is happening. And that's what I mm. that's what when you know when obviously I was watching everything you was out there, I was just thinking like how in this mm. day and age in this modern world now I know for men not obviously not for all countries but for most like how is that belief like how do they how can it be and the it's so high like the statistics statistics are so high they, they said 80 percent of the country believe that that's true the witch doctors that you know the sacrifice and all these things will bring them m- money and health because you've got to remember there's a lot of diseases out there they've got no health care you know there's no like mm. there's no there's nothing so you could imagine if someone gets like there was just one woman that was sitting down in the slum her her leg was like is it called elephantitis I'm not sure it's called. yeah when it's really but it, she had all these growths coming out of it and all this weeping pus and it was just like obviously it's just been getting bigger and bigger and she's just she was sitting there breastfeeding her baby amongst all these flies and I was just looking at her thinking like oh my god like, that could have just started from a a little cut that maybe yeah. got infected on her foot like you know there's no like healthcare or anything like and mm. it's just insane it's so it seems like it's so um like the country is just so what? like stuck in yeah and I remember walking away and, um, you know, Adam was like, you should be so proud of yourself. Like, I can't begin to tell you how grateful we are for everything you've done, blah, blah, blah. But it's the complete opposite. You feel, it's like you've, I know I've raised the money and I've made raised the awareness and it's given a lot of us talk about trafficking, but it's like it's never going to be enough because when you're there, you mm. think, how... Because you feel like you 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 you're not gonna be able to save every child. You can't stop poverty, right? But it's but like that's this overwhelming thing. feeling of like I'm never gonna be able to do this. So what am I gonna? How can I walk away from this without it's bringing all these children home and giving them a nice life? It's just a really hot, heavy feeling. Yeah, of course. But I think I mean that's so, so natural for you to feel mm. like that. But at the end of the day, like think it's it's going to be impossible. You you can't save the world, mm. but. What yeah. you've done is going to make a difference to so many children's lives, and then think of the effect of that for their children, yeah, from, to their children. From their, so yeah, it's, it'll education. be generations, and mm. like you say, and educating them is going to make such a huge difference. But I can imagine it almost feel like I can imagine like the feeling of like like you're drowning. Like how do you yeah. like what can you do to? Mm. Even that slum we was in, there was thousands of people in there, mainly kids. They was like, I said to Adam, like, what? He he said, you know, think of all the billionaires in the world, right? And the the highest, highest of the highest could obviously end poverty tomorrow, but it's just not the way the world works, is it, unfortunately? But, like, he said this whole slum could be squashed, rebuilt from concrete, so everyone's actually got, like, a roof over their head. Uh, electric and then like a couple of like water pumps because you can like dig really deep into the ground and get fresh water because we went to one of the villages that had fresh water it's really Mm -hmm. nice to see you know they had water to wash in and drink like clear water um he said you know you're looking at a million pound and that would there was like thousands of people i was like could you imagine like a million pound can 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 do there there like build a whole village and community I mean that's the long term goal Um, still learning and working we've got the event coming up on the 6th but like me and Kelly looked at each other and was like that is so achievable absolutely like, yeah I don't know where we'd put everyone whilst we're building it but <laughs> that is so achievable like you know but yeah you just I think it's like one step at a time and well I do going keep going and I do yeah. just think like Eve, that has bought like by you going there and being there has just brought so much mm. awareness to so many people and also you've raised so much money which is going to be like yeah. life changing for so many of them so for people that might wonder because we exceeded on the um uh 80,000 pounds I think we're at 130 something which is incredible um so we got we're going we're going to go excuse me so obviously there's like running costs once we're up and running. 
so that obviously pay for like you know a couple of years running costs and also a van so like to when they collect the children and bring them to the rescue center um they want to get a nice little van they said it was like i don't know four to five thousand pounds but it can fit like 13 kids in it i was like that's amazing like all that money is just going to be going to on it like it, it's life-changing what it's going to do and they've already got the land so you might have seen it on my instagram they've actually got the land so it's just a case of the construction now and get it get yeah. it built and actually, like on a positive note, we went to one of the baby centres, uh, sorry, care centres, care home, care, care centres for children and babies up to the age of four, babies and children up to the age of four. Um, and there's quite a few of them in Uganda, but some of them are actually like scams. Oh, there's so many scams as well, like it's just crazy. Um, so we were chatting to the lady, like the chief um like manager at this baby she sat and done an interview of us um and that is like the best of the best the one that we was in you know it's um they've got electric all the babies have got a cot there's beds they have food they've got a little school there um you know got a little park to play in um and that's the idea is obviously to get more of those and I said so like these children like what you know how, how have they become to come here and they're all, all abandoned, all of them, babies. Billy, there was a cot and there was three newborn babies in. One was two weeks no. old, six weeks old, maybe eight weeks old. They're no all laying way. in the cot. You go in the baby room, they've just got like mats. There's just babies everywhere, all laying oh. down, all just like, you know. But like, thank God they're being looked after. They're not in the slums. Yeah. Where they're being trafficked. Mm -hmm. You've got paedophiles coming in, you've been sold, they're being sacrificed. Like it's a safe hub. Safe what I mean? hub for them, yeah. For them, and they'll get adopted. So these children, hopefully, most of them, because she said, yeah, they hopefully will get adopted to nice families in the country, you know, or wherever. Yeah. But um oh it's so sad. Like they 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 she said the amount of children we rescue, like from drains. Oh my gosh. A lot of them are left in churches because they do like a, let's yeah. say a midnight prayer. Then no one can see them because it's dark. So they'll leave the babies in the church Aww. and then get collected. But, um, oh, it's happening like every single day. And I remember them saying, It's probably said, like so many mums that yeah. do that. It's, it, it's probably because it's almost like a, like they're making a sacrifice because they want their baby to have a better life like some of them might think I could yeah. not physically bring my baby up this poor it's really sad and they know and that I if just... the baby goes to a centre maybe yeah. they've got a better chance in life imagine how sad that is for the mum as well by the way I know a lot of people say yeah. like obviously in your DM where's the parents how could you do that you don't realise it like you don't realise how yeah. they're living and how they got pregnant you don't know how it would have happened to them like you know what I mean yeah. all sorts of horrible things happen and, um, but yeah, so that baby centre was, you know, it was lovely. You just think, oh, like that's what they're going to build, another centre. Yeah. But for children up to the age of 18, they're going to have a, we're going to have a school, um, obviously electric, fresh water, food, you know, all their washings hanging out. They've got like clean clothes, you know, it's, yeah. it's the best of the best there. When you compare that to then the slum we went to, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, but anyway, I am so glad that I went and we had the best team ever like yeah. me, Kelly, Fish, the fat camera guy, um, Adam, obviously, who is a superhero in himself. <laughs> he hates me saying that. Yeah. I was like, you, I, go, you're, I say to him, you're the real life Liam Neeson from Taken. <laughs> He's like, yeah. oh yeah. my God. He is. So he does, like, that, does Adam, kids. does he, does he live, is he based there? Adam actually lives, he's got four children. So he's between Stockholm and Russia. So that's like he, okay. he lives in. But anyway, he, he's traveling all year round, like all mm -hmm. year round. But so he's just amazing. But Adam, this is obviously he's the CEO of this charity that he set up. Adam does not take a wage. He, he has a separate, he, he has his separate profession, what he does. And then he set up this mm -hmm. separately. Like nobody, everybody that works for PRC are volunteers. So every single penny goes yeah. to these children, goes to these guilt builds, goes to the education, the medical care. Like, it, honestly, it's the most incredible charity I've ever done anything with. There's not, nobody is taking no wages. Yeah, there's no they cuts spend anywhere. It's just nothing. direct. I think they spend 4% on amazing. marketing. Like, it's just 
insane what they're doing, you know, and it's like a family. It's like, you know, everyone's just so passionate. Yeah. Um, and who else? Fish. He done all our videography. He was amazing. Um, Kelly uh, and Alex and Roger, who are based out in Uganda for Make a Child Smile. Hello, darling. Detective Livingstone. Hi. Mummy showed you all the videos of her in Uganda, didn't I? All the children. I showed yeah. the kids everything. She can't hear me. I think she? it's really important. I will, I, yeah, I showed Nelly and Arthur. I said to them, like, I was like, um, you know, aunties in Uganda, obviously they knew you was going there. Yeah. And I showed them and Arthur was really emotional, really like, and I was like, it's yeah. okay. I said, like, you know, obviously it's hard. It's a lot for them to take in, isn't it? Because they just see children like of their age looking up well I know obviously the videos weren't all of them looking upset but you know Arthur just goes mummy the flies and the dirt and the you know know. it's it's a lot for children to take in as well absolutely but I've showed them everything and we talk about it often and I do think it's important because they're so you know they're living their lovely lives in their little bubble which uh, rightly so you know it's just how you're their environment but they've got no idea what else is going on in the world and just think like realistically nor nor did we until we become adults so the 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 sooner they know then hopefully the more that they'll learn and as they grow older they'll really understand yeah absolutely well anyway I just want to say, obviously I've said it a million times over, but I am so proud of you. Like, honestly, thank you. And I know so many other people are with me on that one for putting it out there. And, you know, it is honestly truly inspiring. And thank you. You were so brave and so amazing. I I just want to, I just hope that this is going to keep building, building and do so much for the charity because it's amazing what, what you're all doing. Amazing, the, incredible. The, the messages, the DMs, the reposts, the people that donated, honestly, all of us, we just can't thank everyone enough. Like, yeah, we were so overwhelmed. The, the day we showed Alex, who is out on the ground in Uganda, on the phone, the money we raised, he burst into tears. Do you know when you're just like, oh, oh like, yeah. it means so much to them um, and to all of us. But, yes, thank you so much. Um, I... Yeah, it's just weird being back in reality. Yeah, I, I just still feel like I'm floating a little bit. It's just bizarre. It's going to take, I reckon, a few more days. Um, what do you think you've, like, emotionally and physically, mm. like, it's been a lot, hasn't it? Yeah. And it is that, like, you're come, you've come back home, you're straight away back to three kids. Yeah. And also it's like, I suppose it's like separating, like, that thought mm. process to now, like, being back, like, you know, with the three kids. It's just, yeah... But anyway, it's thank you, everyone, and thanks for listening. And we are actually, we did film everything, so we thought it'd be really interesting to put together like a little mini documentary just to put onto YouTube because, you know, like just to watch everything, like, and obviously it's people's choice if they want to watch it or not. So we're going to hopefully get that out in the next couple of months. We'll let you know when it's out. Um, but I guess next episode, we'll do <laughs> some Ask Us Anything, so it'll be a bit more upbeat. <laughs> <laughs> and this weekend Billy I'm coming to yours aren't I we've got a sleepover yes well actually we'll have plenty to speak about in the next episode because we can talk about everything that we got up to (laughs) the weekend at mine and the kids haven't seen each other for a while have they they're very excited are you excited to go to aunties on Saturday yeah it's going to be so fun Um, okay well I'm going to get this little cheeky monkey to bed because she should be in bed (laughs) I'm going to go and see what's going on in my house (laughs) well I love you very much thank you for listening to me (laughs) no I've I've loved every second thank you night 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 love you Rose